Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So it looks like in the church. Everybody can hear me? Okay. So rethinking parts and products. Rethinking, that's the key. Rethinking leads to innovative ideas and creative products. So this is the light bulb. It was developed from Thomas Edison in the 1880s. And it was a disruptive idea. So it was the first light bulb, bulb um, which was pro uh, producible in series. And this was an innovative idea created by rethinking. And rethinking um, is also um, needed in additive manufacturing. That's what I like to talk about today. So this is a standard armrest, as you can see here. Um, it's in every airplane you, you fly with, um, has a weight of 200, around 250 grams. And this is what we can do with additive manufacturing. So it's a weight, fa weight saving of 44%. This armrest is just 140 grams. And in an airplane, we can save more than 30,000 euros over a lifetime. So that's a heat exchanger you all know. It's soldered together layer by layer. You always see it as a cuboid or as a cylinder. And that's what we can do with additive manufacturing. So this design is scalable. Um, it's free in shape. You can integrate more functions. So let's have a look at another example. 3D printing or additive manufacturing has a, a lot of value for us and so that's why Airbus started to uh, help us on this. We have uh, already started with uh, two parts. One for the system to control the wing and the other part is to assemble parts of the radar. You can print in many materials uh, today. You basically start with a powder volume of that material and by layers with uh, using uh, laser beams they melt uh, by layers little by little to end up with the part. We use 3D printing first because we can do many parts that would take way more time to machine. The main benefits will be, uh, will be the weight. Weight is a key parameter for such a highly competitive boat, but you have also uh, cost and lead time, which will play a role. Uh, in fact, you can use uh, many different uh, materials. We are using scalm alloy, which combines the light of the aluminum and uh, almost the specific strengths of the titanium. It brings opportunity for new shape and uh, very complex parts. For a piece like this, you have to imagine how complex it can be if it was made out of one single bill of material. Instead, by 3D printing, you don't have to machine all that parts. There is a lot of weight saving and time saving too. The limitation is only your brain <laughs> and your thinking. So this part we developed this Oracle, it was the weight saving and the fast lead time was so important for them. So let's go to our um, best practice example, the light rider. So I think the most of you have, have seen our light rider and now I'd like to show you how this works. So that's the standard frame you know, it's on Harley Davidson. And this is the frame of our light rider. So it's revolutionizing and innovative. It's a completely bionic and developed in a numerical driven process. So that's what we did with this frame. So we made an, the first 3D printed motorbike. So I'd like to, I, I, or I do have a, a, a short puzzle with you. So to ask you some questions about that, maybe you can help me um, to get more feeling about this technology and what we can achieve with it. So the frame weight, so the weight of a frame of a normal motorbike, um, who knows how, how heavy is such a frame? Oh, no, no bike driver. So it's around, let's say the, the um, smallest one is around eight kilograms, it goes up to 20 kilograms, just the frame of a motorbike. So we can achieve with additive manufacturing a frame with this hollow structure, six kilogram. So what is easier is the weight of a whole motorbike. Mine has 230 kilogram at home. It's quite heavy. Um, 
This bike has just 35 kilograms, so you can almost put it in your hand luggage. And for the engine, of course, we use, elect we use, we use an electric engine with six kilowatt, which goes up to a speed of, guess, 80 kilometers an hour. So, and that you believe it really runs, see the next video. ...an hour and weighs only 35 kilograms. The frame weighs just six kilos and comes entirely from a 3D printer. It was designed on a computer. An algorithm was applied to data concerning the stress and strain affecting a motorcycle in operation. We thought about all kinds of things. What's located where on a bike? How big is it? What's the wheelbase? What happens when you ride it? That's how we created the geometry. Every part that had no function was taken out. The parts were modeled on the 3D printer using a patented aluminum alloy from the aerospace industry. It's as light as aluminum, but almost as strong as titanium. Niels Grafen expects knowledge gained by printing the ultralight motorcycle to advance aerospace technology. Every kilo that you have to lift into the air costs the airlines, and by extension the customer, a lot of money. So if this production method enables the manufacture of lightweight parts, then ultimately the airline passenger will pay less. Okay, so it's quite tough to see that with the sun, isn't it? Um, so it's basically the design freedom offered by 3D printing leads to geometries that are until now impossible to produce. Um, just to mention my CEO here. So all these examples I have shown, um, there you see rethinking is, um, is necessary to create innovative and new products. So, and how that works, basically by three steps I will go through. So at the first, you have to rethink the design. And how that works, um, I will show you on the example of the, of the light rider. So at first, um, we, we define a design space so that's basically the frame where the, the process, the, the algorithm can add and remove a powder um, or material. And you, you set up this kind of restriction, like where is it allowed to, to um, put on the material. So if you have this design frame, you add all the load cases that are necessary. So we use the person with 120 kilograms um, in different driving situations, like cornering, standing, he's accelerating or braking. So we get all these load cases, and these are basically our boundary conditions. So, and with the boundary conditions, a uh, numerical process runs. So we get this optimized frame structure. So this, this withstands the, the loads with a minimum amount of material. So the most of you probably already have seen this kind of optimization, and then we go in the redesign. Redesign means um, we shape this design and we optimize it for additive manufacturing. So we made out of this optimized structure a hollow frame. We smoothed the radio and to give it more sex appeal. So that is the design you have to rethink. Rethink by a numerical driven process. The next step is using the rethinking for the material. So. Material, we use a skull alloy that's an own development in cooperation with Airbus. So since we are a um, subsidiary of them. So this, this fine powder, it's, hmm, it's quite hard. So it's a powder bed process we use. And this skull alloy has a high specific strength. It goes up to 450 megapascal. With new parameters, we do have already 500 megapascal. And with a standard aluminum alloy you can get on the market, it's just around 290. So um, the, specific, the specific strength of skull alloy is almost 70% of the titanium. That's quite impressive. So we can use it for a lot of um, examples, in the, in, especially in the aerospace, automotive, or robotics. So further on, we, we do develop with titanium and build with stainless steel on our machines. OK, so material development was with Airbus to get higher strengths and new materials to broadening the possibilities and uh, with additive manufacturing. The third pillow is the production. So the production um, at, at, ours, uh, at our company, so at Airbus Appworks, um, is this. We are working with basically with 
um, EOS machines and the latest machine from Additive Industries, the Metal Fed One in the upper left corner. So, and this, for this machine, we are the beta user, so I'd like to tell you some more because this is how industrialization goes on. So, um, it's a combination of, of different steps to, to avoid a lot of human interactivity. So, and how that looks like um, is this machine. <laughs> so, um, the, the metal for bone has more um, AM cores, so we can build on different materials without human interactivity. So let's say on this chamber we use Scalmaloy, on this chamber we use our um, stainless steel, the 360 null. So each chamber um, has an, an automatic powder removal and we don't have to clean it. We have the handling system in the background, so the part gets out automatically in the heat treatment and then we can um, take it out of the machine. So from sending the, the geometries to the machine, um, over printing and heat treatment, and then we can take it out the part. It's really great. So this machine, um, as you said, we are the beta user since, since April this year. So we will, right now we work with a two laser system on this machine and we'll upgrade to a four laser system to um, even increase the productivity even more. So with this machine, we predict a, a cost saving for around 40 to 50% just by combining all these steps. Okay, so um, what is very important for us as well, um, as we're working a lot for aerospace and automotive and the other industries, um, we are certified in ISO 9100, so the quality control is very important. For this, we use um, the Additive World platform um, to, uh, to develop um, the software that we can really track every step in this process. And this uh, includes, in this case, like the request handling, the simulation of a build job to reduce costs um, and, the, um, and the, the quality control, like all this list with um, chemical details and build plate um, powder bread process. Okay. Yeah, so, but now it's up to you. So it's all about industrialization of, of additive manufacturing. So that means rethinking the design, the material, and the production. So if you like to benefit from additive manufacturing, there are a couple of questions you should ask yourself. So do you like to reduce the weight, which is for us very important for aerospace right now, but comes more and more in the other, other industries as well. Um, do you like to integrate more functions like, um, reducing the assembly time to combining this, making one part out of 10? Or do you like to, to increase your performance um, based on the design freedom given by additive manufacturing? Okay, so rethinking all these pillars means also for us working together with the leaders on the market. So um, as you have seen, for the machines, we're working with additive industries and EOS to develop the machines together. We give the input, we give feedback, um, but the software part, the optimization, we do have a partnership with Altair um, and the Airbus Group, as I told you, is mainly all the material development. And the last one is over the whole value chain, so it's very important to, to, to fit to your needs. So we recently started a cooperation with SAP, um, but where we mainly started the very first beginning, like doing an automatically part screening with you and your system. Okay, so now you've seen the importance of rethinking design, rethinking material, and rethinking production. And it's just this combination to, to find the way and to create new innovative products. So please keep in mind and remember always these three pillars the design, the material, and production. Okay, thank you very much. And meet me next to the stage. I have also my colleague with me, Harry Klein from Additive Industries. If you have more questions about that or about us, I will just stay next to you. Thank you very much.